My name is Andy and I own this 1964 Fiat Cabriolet Spider. I found this car in the newspaper back in 1999. Um, There's a gentleman selling the car after a Hurricane Andrew. The owner of this car has a beautiful history and story. Um, the owner purchased the car, it was a lady that purchased the car in New York in 1964. She was in the Air Force. She was a, uh, I think it was, she was a sergeant or a lieutenant, I forgot, in the Air Force. And she was stationed in Homestead Air Force Base. So she brought the car down from, from New York and housed it in the barracks in Homestead Air Force Base. She unfortunately passed away in 1987. The beautiful thing about this car is the way she documented everything. This is all her handwriting. She documented every purchase, every time that she would actually put fuel in the vehicle. This is 1964. Um, on uh, August 3rd, uh, she put uh, she had 641 miles, eight gallons of fuel for two dollars and forty cents. So she would actually document everything that she did to the car all the way to the day that she passed. Um, so this is really the true story, documented story of this vehicle, and that's the unique thing about it. The story about it. Um, every time she did a, a repair to it, she would document it, uh, wipers, everything. She was very, since she was in the military, I guess she was very particular on writing everything down and keeping a log of everything that she did to the car, fixed the flat. And, you know, it's things like that, that you, 1968, kept the log That's of crazy. everything she did to the car to the final day. She passed away in 87. I purchased a car in 1999. The car was in a barn. And uh, the rest is history. So I kind of brought this car back to life in memory of her. So the car, uh, basically, it was had no no roof on it. The uh, front wheel shield it was cracked. No seats. The floor was all rotten out. The engine didn't start. Had originally 20,000 miles on it. Original documented miles. Right now it has 27,000 original miles. Wow. So the car basically had to restore everything. I took the car completely apart in my garage. I restored it twice. The first time, it took me probably two and a half years to find the parts. Uh, like I said, it's a very rare car. There's no parts. You can't just call Fiat. There's nothing left for this car. It's a, it's a model. It did, they built a lot of them, but for whatever reason, there's no parts out there. And uh, so I restored, did the paint on it, all the metal work. Uh, most of the interior I did myself, door panels and everything I had to construct because there's no parts for this car. So tell me about this engine. So this is a 1500 uh, cubic inch engine, four cylinder, uh, carburetor, uh, Weber dual exhaust, very simple engine to work with. Thank God it didn't have to do anything to the pistons. All the compression was good. It was just uh, kind of restored the carburetor, uh, alternator, just a regular uh, cleaned out the radiator itself. Little by little kind of started finding parts here and there, uh, covers for your, uh, your brake reservoir. Unique piece here, it would be the steering. I mean, very simple, but if, <laughs> that's your steering. Back in the Pit. 60s. I really enjoyed getting my hands greasy and uh, and worked on the engine, did the transmission, the rear end. So the undercarriage of the car is also restored. I restored that as well. And that was uh, the first time I restored the car and then showed it for the first time in memory lane. And then I come to this beautiful show here every year, at least, you know, uh, as much as I can, just uh, take it out to very minimal shows. The car is a testament to, you know, us uh, car lovers uh, just uh, trying to do and bringing these beautiful works of our history back to life, you know. And why a Fiat? Was there any history to this? I just, I just love it, the Italian cars to me. And when I was a kid, my neighbor had a Fiat and I fell in love with, with the Fiat. You know, it always stayed with me. So I was, I would always look through classifieds back when we had the newspaper and classifieds. And then I found this car in 1999 and that's, uh, you know, I went out there, purchased this car for $500. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. And, uh. You know, it's, I enjoy it as much as I can. I drive it as much as I can. It's not a trailer beauty. So I, you know, when the weather's nice, you'll catch Andy on the road with it. What's the feeling when you drive this car? It takes you back. I think it transports you back to that era when, you know, just the sound. I don't even turn on the radio. I just want to hear the engine. And uh, it's just so nice driving the car. And then you get 
so many people videotaping you and honking the horn and you know it's uh it's very nice you know i drive it with my wife or my dog and it's such a cool uh, moment just getting behind the wheel of these cars and just think about the people that built this car by hand it's a it's a unique uh it's a unique experience driving these old cars talk to me a little bit about the rarity of this car you had mentioned to me about the rarity yes uh this car right now registered in the united states is only like 15 of them and worldwide registered cars are about 47. so it's a very rare car it was uh designed by pina farina when he was designing this car, he was actually designing the Ferrari 250. The rear lenses on this car are from the Ferrari 250. Uh, wow. When I purchased the lenses, uh, the gentleman sent me the box and said Ferrari 250. I called him and I said, hey, uh, Jerry, you sent me the wrong lights. And he goes, no, no, those are for the Fiat as well. Pina Farina would design cars and use the same parts for multiple cars. And uh, so he used the Ferrari 250 lights on my Fiat. So. I have some Ferrari in it, <laughs> it's cousins.